Hey guys, today we're going to learn about grep and particularly regular expressions with grep. Now, the first thing we need to understand is that there are multiple versions of grep. Um, there's regular grep, there's F grep, there's E grep. Um, we are going to explore E grep and use regular expressions. Now, what are regular expressions? Well, they, um, they are certain special characters um, on the keyboard that are used to um, give you added search features for grep, right? Regular expressions are, are used in other programming languages like Perl and um, is used in a lot for text processing and other things, but there's special characters that are used to represent something else, okay? And I'll get into that when I demonstrate it. So um, let's jump right into this and we'll get started. So we're at the command line here. I'm in my temp folder. I'm going to be using a file called cars that I created that I list a few different types of makes of cars, including Tonka, my favorite type of car, right? And um, I'm going to use this as for the demonstration file. So we have learned how to use grep and grep is a filter, right? So when we use grep, and I want to find a dodge. I can do that within the file and it filters. So it takes all of this. It looks for the keyword or filter that I'm looking for here and it matches it with dodge and that's what it displays. I'm able to filter that file and just get back exactly what I want. Now, if we want more complex searches, we need to use regular expressions. Regular expressions again are these different characters on the keyboard which um, allow us to do some of these more complex searches. For example, what if we wanted to search for two different cars? We want to look for Dodge and BMW. Well, how do we do that? Well, we're going to use a different version of grep, one called egrep. E allows us to use regular expressions. I'm going to put this my search now in quotation marks and I'm going to look for dodge. I'm going to use the pipe symbol. Now, this is not the same type of pipe that we've used before on the command line. When it's used with grep, it is used as an or option, right? BMW. And I'm going to close that off, which now this is stating look for dodge or BMW from the cars text file. Now I was able to return back Dodge and BMW and I can add as many or pipes that I want in there. I want Tonka as well. And now I have Tonka, right? Because it's Dodge or BMW or Tonka. I want them all, right? Those three. And I was able to just filter those using the regular expression pipe character that represents or. Okay, let's look at a few other options that we have available to us. All right, we use the or. Let's look um, for a broader search, right? Let me go back up here. Let me, uh, so we can look at our file here. Let's look for, um, let's use um, a wild card, right? For instance, let's do egrep. And let's start with anything that looks starts with T. I can do a, a dot star A cars. Let's see what this brings up. Look at that. This search for anything that starts with T has anything in between. Doesn't matter how many characters. Look, Toyota has one, two, three, four characters. And Tonka has one, two, three characters. But they both end in A. Starts with T, ends in A. And it can have any letter or character in between the T and the A. That's what the dot star does. So now it's, it's kind of this broader, more wide search. Now, if I just wanted Toyota or something more specific, right, I can customize this any way I want. Now I'm just bringing back Toyota, right? Um, so you can mix and match this any way you want. Um, let's say we are looking for a particular car um, that has a T in it, right? We only have two here right now, <laughs> right? Toyota and Tonka. So let's go ahead and look at that. If I do egrep, 
I can just do a T and that brings back Tonka and Toyota, right? Now, let's say, um, hmm, what if I only wanted something that returned, oh, let's, let's do our case sensitivity. Yeah, let's do that. Now, this isn't really a regular expression, but it is an option with egrept that we can use. So let's say I am looking for Tonka T. Remember, Linux is case sensitive. If I did this same search with a capital T, it won't find anything because Tonka and Toyota are lowercase t's. Linux is case sensitive, which means a capital T is not the same as a lowercase t. All right. Let's clear the stream, put this up at the top. Let's get our list of cars here. So if I don't like this, let's say I go, well, I don't care if it's uppercase or lowercase. I can add an I option to my search here. And what that I stands for is case insensitive, which means that I don't care if it's uppercase or lowercase T. I just want anything that has a T in it. Oh, okay. So that's what the dash I does. Again, that's not a regular expression, but it's an option that you can use with grep or egrep. It works with both. All right. And that brings back so that we can use cases and that. So that's helpful. If you're searching for something that might be uppercase, might be lowercase, you don't know, put the dash I in there. It will cover both. Sometimes you only want to bring back things with uppercase, right? or lowercase, then don't use the I and use specifically what you are looking for. Now, let's say we are looking for um, a particular um, instance where we only want a certain character from the beginning of the line. For instance, let's say we are looking for anything with a V in it, right? We're looking up this VW right here and we have two VWs in there right? So how do we do that? If I, um, oh, let's see here. Let's say, let's say I'm looking for someone with W. Let's just do W. We'll get rid of that. This brings back all three, right? Now let's say I only want something that returns with a V in it. And in my example, it's a poor example because I really don't have anything else that is a V. Do I have anything else? Oh, let's do N. Let's do N. Look at that. All right. This, this is a great example here. So when I just search for N, I bring back Nissan and Tonka. Both have N's in them, right? Well, I really wasn't thinking N. I just want any words that start with N, where the line starts with N, which is Nissan. Nissan begins the line with N. Tonka starts with the T. So how can I specify the first letter of the line starting with an N? Well, um, we can do that. Let me get my list here and let's look at this option again, right? So what we do is we use a character called carrot, the carrot character. It's above the six. So you do have to press the shift the six, you get this carrot, this upward pointing arrow type thing. I'm going to refer to it as a carrot and a uh, top hat. I think I've heard it called before, but anyway, what that represents in with our regular expressions is the beginning of a line. It means only look at the beginning of the line and the very next character at the beginning of the line has to be an N. If we do that, it only brings back Nissan. See? An N at the beginning. It doesn't count the N at the end. It doesn't count the N in the middle. It only counts the N at the beginning by using this regular expression of the top hat. Are you seeing how our searches can become so much more powerful, right? Much more customizable in what we want to do using grep, right? Isn't this fantastic, right? So we've learned how to use the pipe within our regular expressions to do an or option, this or this, Right. We've also um, learned how to do use a wild card so that we can just fill in blanks. Right. The dot star to just fill in a wild part. Uh, we're using the, the carrot to do something starting from the beginning. What about something at the end? Yeah. Let's see here. So 
um, we want anything that ends in W. Well, the regular expression for that is dollar sign, and we put the dollar sign at the end because that's the end of the line. So what this is telling us is we're looking for anything with N and then the end of the line. So what is N and then the end of the line is right there, right? So that's the dollar sign part is this part right here, right? Well, the only thing that we have here is Nissan again. So we can do that. And now look at how it highlights in red, the Nissan there, the N at the end, because that's what the criteria we're putting in for our keyword search, right? For our filter, our grep, that's what we're trying to match at the end. Let's do this with an A, anything that ends with an A, yeah, we don't want anything that has an A in it. We just want something that ends with an A. How about this? Let's do, let's just search with everything with an E. Oh, we get back Chevy. We get uh, Dodge. We get back Mercedes. Hopefully I spelled that right. I think so. Right. But I go, no, 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 no. Um, I only want it if it ends in an E. I don't want it if it just has an E in it. That's ridiculous, right? Why would I ever want something with something else, right? So how do we do this? We put the dollar sign at the end. That says, oh, only if it ends with an E, right? Pretty cool. So we know how to look for the end, for the beginning. We know how to look for something that only ends with something. We can do wildcard searches. We can do an or type of search. What else can we do? Well, Let's uh, let's narrow this down a little bit. Let's use the square brackets to um, bring back only certain characters, right? For instance, um, this is similar to the wild card, the dot star, but it's more limiting to a single character. For instance, if I want to, and I don't think I have a good example here of something. Yeah, let's look at. Chevy. I'm going to put E A D Y cars. Let's look at that. Okay. So what we're doing is using the square bracket. Remember when we used the dot star that brought back everything, right? When we did, um, Toyota was the thing, right? That brought back anything that started with the T ended in an A, right? But what if I only want to bring back something very specific, right? I only wanted, I didn't, I didn't want it to be any letter or any number uh, that's possible, right? I only wanted an A or an E as part of that single character letter, right? So we can use the square brackets to be able to do that. For instance, if I had, let, let me put in a few other options here. So if I do echo um, E and I put in um, something called like um, Chevy. I know there's no car Chevy that I'm aware of. And I put in something called Chevy, <laughs> right? So now when I, let's go up to the top here and we'll cat cars. Okay. So now we have like Chevy, Chevy, and Chevy, right? So if I did something like egrep and I used this dot star dy cars, This brings back all three because it doesn't matter. It brings back anything. It can be an E, it can be an A, it can be an I, it can be an E-I-O-U, it can be C-H-X-Y-W-Z-1-2-3, V-Y, whatever. Because the, it's a wild card. It's just like, you can be whatever you want, right? It's the Wild West, right? Well, let's narrow that down. Go like, I don't, I don't want a Chevy. That looks like a Chevy knockoff, right? And Chevy is legit, right? I don't know. So I want to just bring back Chevy and Chevy. Well, how do I just distinguish those two? Well, that's where the square brackets come in. Let's look at that. So instead of the dar star, which is like anything, 
I only want an E or an A. That's it. There's my Chevy and Shabby, right? Oh, I don't want the Chevy. Chevy suck. I want a Chevy and a Chevy, right? Do you see? And, and it doesn't have to be. It could be, um, you could put as many as you want there. E-I-O-U-X-Y-Z. I don't know, whatever. Now, I don't have anything that's C-H-S-V-Y or C-H. LVY, so those aren't obviously showing up because there's no match for them, right? Within my text file that I have. But it did bring back, I have an I and an A, right? I just don't have an O or some of these other ones, right? So you don't have to just limit it to two characters, it's whatever. But all of this will represent one character in your keyword search that you're doing, right? And that's the point. So that's what it does. Now, we can also mix and match these regular expressions, which is really cool. For instance, let me clear my screen here, go back up top, because sometimes it's easier to do that, and show we what we want. So let's say we want any car that ends with an E or an A, but only if it ends with an E or an A at the end. Huh. So how do we do that? I know I want it to be have an E or an A in it. And if I just do this, let's see what I get. Oh, man, that's not exactly what I wanted, right? Look, it has Chevy. It has Mercedes, which has an E throughout it. Um, it has Chevy, which has an E in it. And I, I just don't want that. All I want is if it ends in an A or ends in an E, I want both of those. So how can I do that? Well, I can use the same option. And do you remember the regular expression that allows us to only find characters at the end, right? At the end, that's our dollar sign. So now I'm mixing and matching the square brackets with the dollar sign at the end, which means if it ends in an A or an E and it's at the end of the line, that's what I want it to return. Look at that. Ends in an A, ends in an E, ends in an A. That's all I got. I didn't get Mercedes. I didn't get Chevy. Uh, I didn't get Chevy. I just got things that ended with an E or an A. Pretty darn cool, right? Now, this works beyond just using it with text files. You can pipe this command, redirect this stuff using the pipe as we have before um, using other commands. So I'm going to show you another command. There's a command here called history. Actually, let me go to bash. I should have been in bash this whole time. All right. If I type history, there's all this text on here, right? It's crazy. Look at all this text. Woo! So much text. But really what I'm looking for is I want to see how many times I used the ls command. Hmm. Well, how can I do that? Well, let's let's check this out. Right? I can use the history command again. And I'm going to pipe that to grep and I'm only going to filter for ls. Oh, let's see how this works for us. Hey, hey it works. Anything that be, has LS in it. Now, look at this. This isn't exactly what I wanted, right? Because look at, this is using the LS CPU command, the LS block command, which I've, I've used, which we'll explore here soon. Um, so this isn't really what I wanted, right? So let's just look for any time I use the ls command by itself with nothing after it. Hmm. Well, how can I do that? Well, let's look here. What we can do is we'll change this to egrept so that we can use some of our regular expressions here. And I'm still going to look for ls, but I want ls to be at the end, right? That, that's the whole thing with using this grep and regular site. We're looking for patterns so that we can filter out exactly what we want to display, right? So let's go ahead and look at that. Um, since ls and there's nothing after it, that looks like it's the end of the line. 
oh, well, we have a regular expression which can do that, right? Which can just show us if something ends in something. That's the dollar sign. Let's see if that works. Boom. Now, all I'm displaying is the LS. Now, yeah, I know I have man and some of the other things, but it's still returning what I'm looking for and what I did the search for. <clears throat> LS, and it ends in LS. LS ends in LS. LS ends in LS, right? I'm able to use that to filter it, right? And I can do all sorts of things, right? I can now even pipe that again if I want to WC so I can get a count of how many times I've done that. Well, 45 times. And that filtered list. See, we can mix and match all these things that we have been learning in this class. Isn't that great? All right. So that is grep use an egrep using regular expressions. We've learned how to use regular expressions to fine tune our searches by uh, using an or option, using a wildcard option to be able to look for things at the beginning of a line, the things at the end of the line, case and sensitivity, um, to use square brackets to kind of narrow things down as well, and how to even use it with the output of other commands and be able to filter that out. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please use grep and egrep. It's something that I use every day. Hope you can find ways to use it every day in your usage too on your Linux journey. Thank you very much.